technology roadmaps. We're going to talk a little about uh, some background in technology roadmaps. Now I'm going to introduce the, the whole MTR, which is a market-led technology roadmap, um, uh, and explain why we, we did this. So I think like even like the basics of innovation, which you know, innovation is a, a kind of multifaceted word, it means lots of different things to different people in different uh, business contexts. And, and just the same way, if your boss asks you to do a technology roadmap, there are multiple versions of what that means. One of the most common versions, uh, I, I just plucked all these off the internet. So if you, if you Google technology roadmap, you will find uh, the most common one. This is um, technology roadmaps from DuPont, IBM, Tenneco, and they're all a similar theme. And what they are is that they're, they're showing how the technology of that business is going to evolve over time. So in effect, it's a, it's a summary of the R&D programs which they ha have on in their business. Um, so this example is, is Intel. Again, I, I, I've done some work with Intel and, and so I, I, I plucked this out there presentations recently. Uh, so for example, for Intel, a technology roadmap means um, how their base technology is evolving over time. And for Intel that makes semiconductors, their base technology they call technology nodes. Uh, this means the, to the layman, this means the minimum feature size which they can etch into their semiconductors. Uh, and and this, this essentially, you, you can see over the last 15 years, you can see uh, they're, they're kind of halving the size of the feature and halving again, etc. And, and this, this is what fuels miniaturization of electronic components. And, and this is what makes the reality of, of the famous uh, Moore's law uh, that you hear about. But essentially, these, this type of technology roadmap, whoever creates it, it it's a summary of what's going on in the R&D program. Now, a useful snapshot, but it, it misses important elements of um, what's happening in the market, I believe. And that's my experience. The, the other type of technology roadmap you see um, is this kind. So it's, uh, they, they are typically published by uh, big industry trade organizations or by um, government uh, trade and industry departments. So you'll see things like this te technology roadmap, hydrogen and fuel cells, for example. Uh, and what these tend to be are, are huge kind of 200 plus page uh, reports on, uh, which is a kind of data dump of, of, of market trends going on um, in, in, the, in the subject market. Um, and they also list things like what's going on at universities in terms of up and coming R&D. So they're, they're, they're very large, um, very difficult to navigate because they're, they're so comprehensive. But the third type, which is um, the typical typical roadmap you'll see from a management consultant. So if, if they come in to help you, you'll have this type of approach. So it's essentially a, a mix of the two. So it's a mix of um, the market trends and a mix of the, uh, the technology evolution, if you like. And what I found is on paper, this is great. This, this should be the way you do it. But ultimately, a roadmap should be understanding what trends are happening in the market and interpreting that in terms of uh, products for you as a business, what technology you need to create, and ultimately what R&D programs you need to put in place. But having been involved in a number of these over the years, I, I find they're very badly executed because what normally happens is uh, a business actually starts here and they, they think, they look around and they think, well, what R&D programs are we doing at the moment? So they fill in this section here and then they, they kind of build on it and end up trying, essentially justifying why they're doing what they're doing, which has some value. But over the years, I, I felt a, a growing frustration that, that these kind of approaches to road mapping were really missing something important, an important opportunity to identify and understand new 
market trends. And that's why we created the MTR approach. So you know, what, I, what I discovered over time is that if done correctly, a roadmap should be a fantastic source of new ideas. It should be a great source of ideas to fill that innovation funnel. You know, there are lots of uh, opportunities and routes for new ideas to come into your business. The ones I list, um, a whole bunch of internal opportunities, a whole bunch of external opportunities. Um, out of all the, the sources of ideas, what I found, if done correctly, the technology roadmap, or the, in fact, we'll call it a market-led technology roadmap in a moment, that actually becomes the best source of new ideas, if done correctly. External sources of ideas, you know, as a business, you should be scanning for what's happening in, in multiple um, facets of, of your market, technology, IP, etc. Although the, the best source of external ideas is always, you know, let's not forget, talk to your customer. So in summary, the problems I, I was finding in the first few years of working in technology roadmaps. So some of them, um, some of them, some types tend to be too high level, uh, very broad, too complex and comprehensive. They try to cover too much ground. You know, think back to the example on uh, you know, hydrogen and fuel cells. That is a massive sector with many, many different segments within it. And you, know, you as a business are very unlikely to be uh, servicing a, a lot of those. A lot of businesses are just interested in, in, in one or two segments. And so such road mapping exercises are, are just too comprehensive. And, and going back to the, the original style of roadmap, many of you I'm sure have been involved in, where you're, you're summarizing what's going on. Uh, those, those tend to be um, very limiting in, in what they're helping a business with strategically. Because that's what a roadmap should be. A roadmap should be a strategic exercise to help point direction for, for the business. And, and here's, the, here's the problem I realized. This is a problem I, I recognize after many years of doing this. I realized what the problem with technology roadmap was. And it's the word technology. Because I think to most businesses, uh, if, if they want to do a technology road mapping exercise, what do they do? They give it to the person that leads technology. And this is exactly why you get a roadmap which begins with, um, so what, what are the projects we have on today? And it builds from that. And what I realized is that actually to, to add value to your business, it shouldn't be technology led, it should be market led. And actually what we developed with the M MTR approach is um, to, to change the ownership. And by changing that mindset and ownership, it, it completely changes the, the way that you run a roadmap and the output you get. And the biggest issue I saw with traditional road mapping is they don't look to the future. They don't look to the trends. They're, they're tr simply trying to fit in what a business does today with what they think the trends are. So that there's something missing. And so uh, myself and, and my team over the years, we, we worked on a number of ways to, to try to, to change that, to, uh, to make the road mapping exercise much more of a valuable strategic exercise. 